Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing and today we're gonna to do a replay of the Brooke Wristlet. This is one of my favorite patterns from So Many Creations. It's really easy to do. It's very scrap friendly, although we do have some new kits for you. All you need is a couple of fat ace and a zipper and some interfacing and you are pretty good to go. Um, the You do need a little hook for here. Um, but it's super fun, super fast. It's a really good beginner project if you're wanting to try a zipper for the first time because it's not super challenging and you don't have a lot invested in terms of material so if it doesn't turn out it's not like end of the world um, but they also make great gifts because you can make a bunch of them all at the same time especially if you're able to use the same thread throughout they're very good for um, bridesmaids gifts you could do them up uh, to match your your gowns they're good for uh, Christmas presents they're just really fun and they hold a lot like I can get my whole wallet in here I can get my phone plus some extra extra goodies in here, maybe a tube of lipstick, plus some other fun stuff. We're gonna watch the tutorial. We originally did it uh, a couple years ago, but this is just one that we love coming back to. And we've got some new Tula fabric. This is Curiouser and Curiouser by Tula Pink for Free Spirit. Uh, this is her take on Alice in Wonderland. So we have the Cheshire Cat here. It's really cute. And then we paired it with some of her classics fabric, uh, the Tula Pink True Colors, their second version. It's in the inside, it matches really Really well and then if you get the kit you also get the zipper and you get a uh, clip so that you can have your hand your little wristlet that way you can just have it on zip it up and go about your day so now that we're all getting out more a new bag is in order and these are perfect for summer because they're bright and fun and what cat lover wouldn't love this one all right so this is the cat the Cheshire cat and we also have some painted roses this one's very limey green um, with a nice little turquoise uh, zipper, which actually matches really nicely with the turquoise in the fabric. And then on the inside, we have that same pink that is in the other one, but it actually looks really different against that, that teal zipper and I think these are just really fun like I said they're really easy they take about two hours a piece to make but if you're making a bunch at the same time you can use the same thread throughout then you can definitely speed that up if you're doing it for gifts all right so that's that we have the new kits that you can get over at shop.quiltaddictsanomics.com you can also get that just a pattern there if that's what you want to use stash and then we have lots of other bag tutorials so make sure you check those out if you're looking for a new bag to run around with this summer now that everybody is out and about again. So with that, let's head on to the tutorial for the Brooke Gristlin. So I've already cut all of my pieces to size as uh, dictated in the pattern. So make sure you get that to go along with it. I'm using a canvas for my outside and I made sure to cut it so that my little cat here, my motif is dead center. And you wanna think about that whenever you're cutting something as if there's a specific design on it if you can line it up any way you can. So what I kind of did was I took my width measurement and I made sure that half of that was right in line with the center of this cat as I was cutting it. And then I kind of eyeballed it from top to bottom as well. So what sets apart a bag that looks homemade versus a really cute bag that looks like you could have gotten it in the store is what's on the inside. And we are using some decor bond interfacing here. It's gonna really give everything a nice stiff appearance, help it last longer. And especially paired with this canvas, it's going to be very durable and last a long time with minimal wear and tear. So this is fusible and it's probably gonna be hard to pick up on camera, but the fusible side is always a little shinier. So you wanna lay it so that the shiny side is up facing the wrong side of your fabric and then the right side of your fabric should be up as well. So I'm just kind of lining that up, getting everything where it should be. Ideally, these should have been cut to the same size, but occasionally they get a little different. Um, now, the reason why you wanna have the shiny side up and the right side of your fabric up is this way, if you accidentally flip the interfacing going the wrong way, you're just gonna fuse it to your ironing surface instead of your iron, and that is a lot easier to fix and clean up later. All right, so I've got my iron on a really hot setting and starting at one side, I'm getting those corners fused down in the sides. And then I'm just kind of working my way over. Another benefit to ironing this way when you're fusing it down is you don't have any wrinkles in the top fabric. Whereas if you iron from the other side, sometimes you can fuse in a wrinkle and then you're stuck with it and that's, that's no good. So you wanna pay close attention to the sides in the edges because that's where it's gonna be the really matter the most. 
All right, so I've got it fused. I'm just gonna check my edges here. I'm just kind of taking a peek around the edges, making sure everything is fused nicely, and it is. If it wasn't, just you know, add a little bit more heat to it until you're ready to go. Definitely feels a lot stiffer. It already was stiff because of the canvas, but now it's really gonna be nice and sturdy and really hold up well over time. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my other outside piece and my two lining pieces as well. So your pattern is going to come with a template that is going to show you what size you need to cut it to. And then there's also some darts as well that get sewn into this one. Um, it comes on just regular paper. So if you want, you can always trace this onto a Mylar template. Um, we used this a couple of videos ago when we did curved seams. This stuff is really great uh, because it doesn't um, melt with the iron and it's great for making templates like this. So if you think you're going to make a lot of these as gifts or something, definitely worth going and getting the Mylar template. And then you can just cut and make yourself one of these that isn't going to get cut up or messed up over time. Um, for the video, for this one, I'm just gonna use the paper that came with it. And then I'm gonna put it back in my pattern to store it with later. So here's what I'm gonna do to make this work is I've got it laid out here and I'm going to put a pair of scissors on there to kind of hold that in place. Then carefully using my rotary cutter because this is just the paper, so I don't wanna cut it and make it smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edges and I'm just kind of holding my fingertips to kind of keep that in place. This is whenever I'm cutting garments, I kind of do that the same way. In that instance, I will pin through because that tissue paper is a little thinner. We'll turn. All right, so now we've got the basic shape of the bag, but I need to mark these darts. So I'm using a friction gel pen here. When I get to the black part, I'm going to use my sew line chalk pencil that's white. And I'm just gonna mark these darts and I'm just going to just mark along the edges of it. It doesn't really matter if your marking tool goes away, so you could use a pencil too if you wanted because this is going to be in the seam allowance. But I'm just marking that. So that way when I take my template away, I've got my little marks here, and then I can take a pair of really sharp embroidery scissors. I really like these micro tips because they're spring loaded, and I can just cut along that and get right up into the point without going too far, and just snip that out. I do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna repeat for my other inside and then also my outers. When you get to use directional fabrics, there is a nice little bit here that says top. So make sure that that is at the top of whatever your directional fabric is so you cut it correctly. All right, so I've got everything all trimmed down and my corners cut out for those little darts on the side. I definitely trimmed a little bit off the bottom as I was kind of going around those curves. So if you intend on making a bunch of these and you would like them to all be the same size and not get a little smaller with each one, I definitely would pick up some of this heat resistant Mylar template. It's really great. It's plastic sheets. You can cut it to size. And then when you're going around with your rotary cutter, it's not gonna get smaller little by little each time. It's gonna stay the size that it, you intend it to be. So I'm gonna set my pieces to the side for now, and now we're gonna do a removable strap. You have two options for this. You can use more of your outer fabric or an accent fabric, and you can add your interfacing to the back of it, fold it over twice and top stitch down, or you can use a scrap of cork fabric. Cork fabric is fabulous. It comes in lots of different colors. I'm using black with some silver accents for this one because I think it'll look 
really cute with this outside piece. Um, and in this case, you only need a tiny little bit, but we sell it in one size and you can use it for many different projects and then you can use the leftover bits for things like this so no bit goes to waste. A little bit about cork fabric. Um, you can do pretty much anything you can do with regular fabric with it. It bolt folds, it bends, it does all the things like normal fabric would do. You just need a jeans needle to stitch with it. And I would use binding clips instead of pins when you are going over it. But it is great for bags and especially the areas of bags where there's gonna get more wear and tear. So like a bag bottom or the wrist um, the strap for this case because it's just sturdier fabric. It is actually from a tree um, in Portugal. They harvest it and it is good for the tree when they remove the bark. It doubles the CO2 that it absorbs and then they don't harvest that tree again for another 20 years. So they're very responsible in the way that they create the cork and then also it's very eco-friendly and good for the environment. So when you're doing the cork, instead of having to fold it over four times, what you just have to fold it in half one time because the edges of the cork do not fray. And so I'm just gonna stitch um, an eighth of an inch seam down both sides of this cork. And if you want, you can use some binding clips to hold that in place as you're going. One other thing that I find really helpful in order to get really good top stitching is I'm using a foot with a quarter inch seam guide. Um, these come with a lot of machines. It's got usually this black little bit on the side. And so that way I can just snug this up against the edge of the fabric that I'm sewing with and it won't go beyond the guide. I normally like hate these with a passion for regular quilting because I feel like the guide gets in the way of your pins and you can't get an accurate join or anything with them. But for anything that you need really great top stitching for and it needs to be accurate and look as professional as possible, like it's a real bag that you bought in the store, these are fabulous because you can just snug it up right in there and then you are good to go. I'm also using matching thread for this section. I'm gonna use a little bit of gray so that way it pops just a little bit and we see a little bit of color. So check your individual foot because you don't wanna break a needle with this. But what I do is I set my sewing machine to a regular quarter inch stitch and then I just keep moving my needle over until it's gonna hit that guide on the foot because I don't wanna hit the guide on the foot because then I'll break a needle. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this in half. And again, if you want, you can use binding clips in order to do that. And I'll trim this little thread later. But I've just got it folded in half here so that my long edges are even. I'm gonna slide that down. And I am gonna top stitch this, or back stitch this. So just sew in place a little bit, make sure those stitches are really secure. This is not quilting where you're gonna be going over things a million times. You wanna make sure that your thread ends are really secure by doing back stitching at the beginning and end of your seams. So I've just got my edges and I'm doing the folded side first where the edges are coming together. I've got that lined up with this black guide. I'm just kind of folding as I go. All right, so now you can see I've got a really nice and even top stitching going all the way down that. And it's nice and even with the edge and I was able to get that with that foot. I'm gonna take it off and go to a regular foot now. You could also sew down the sides if you wanted to. You could really just do a lot of fun things with this. I suppose I'll do one more going down the other side so we have two lines. All right, now we've got a nice double stitching line going on there. It looks really neat, really professional, and it's because we are using that thread there. All right, so I'm gonna take this foot off and I'm gonna put my regular foot on that I use for piecing and get it back to that regular quarter inch stitch for the darts. So when you're pinning darts, what you wanna do is put your right sides together here and you're gonna match up the edges of your bag first. And this is, gives it a little bit of shape and definition at the bottom of the bag so it's not just a super flat thing. And I'm just pinning in there and then I'm also gonna pin a little bit beyond where the edge is just to kind of keep that flat edge going. And we can press that out later if we need to. So we've got that in place. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then I'm gonna work through all the others so that way I can sew everything all at once. All right, so this is what it looks like when I've got it, my darts pinned 
It's looking a little funny right now, but it'll give it some really good shape and definition. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna sew a regular quarter inch seam across this. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and start from this side. I'm gonna start from the outside of the bag. And on my machine, I can set it up so that it will automatically backstitch and cut my threads for me every time I start my seam. If your machine does that, then that's gonna be awesome for this next step. If not, you're gonna to have to remember to backstitch every time you start. All right, so I've got that done. Let's pull that out. So what I'm doing here is I am just stitching right along the edge and then I'm continuing to go forward until I hit where that fold is. And then sew it off a little. So I'm gonna back it up just a little bit so that the back stitching can happen in the fabric. So let's take a closer look at that here. So I started here and then I stitched forward. So the end of the cut part of the dart is here, but I continued sewing so that my quarter inch was even with this until I sewed off this folded part here. And so that way I'm gonna have some really good definition with the bottom of that bag and I know where to stop. Now I'm gonna repeat that on the other side and do all the rest of my bags as well. All right, so I got one done. I'm gonna go ahead and poke the bottoms out here. So now you can see, this is what it looked like before. It was all inside. When I poke it out, it gives some nice body, some nice definition. You can really see how this bag is gonna to come together. And it is really stiff, like it is holding this shape all on its own, thanks to that interfacing combined with the canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of my bottoms, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so now it's time to install a zipper. I know this can be scary, but it's gonna be just fine, I promise. So I have 24 inch zippers here. Um, you just need one that's at least as long as the pattern calls for, because you can always trim it down later. We have these ones by By Annie. I really like them. They come in lots of different colors. I chose black for this one because again, it coordinates with the exterior, but we have lots of ones that will work with whatever fabric it is that you choose. All right, so what I wanna do is have the right side of my fabric up and I'm gonna flip my zipper so that the teeth side are going down and I'm making sure that my zipper pull is hanging off to the side. And that is because it is a lot easier to sew a zipper on if your zipper pull is not in the way. And this is plenty long enough, so we're gonna be just fine. We don't have to worry about that. So it doesn't need to be centered or anything. It just needs to be on there. So now I'm gonna pin this in place here. Kind of just working my way down. Now we're gonna take our lining and we're gonna put it right sides together with the fabric. So the right side is going to be down. We're gonna see the interfacing side on the way up. And then I'm gonna repin. I'm gonna line up those corners and just sort of rework my way down. In this case though I am, since I already got that zipper all nice and in line, I'm gonna go ahead and line up those corners and get everything together here. and then just repin through all layers, both the inside, the outside, and that zipper, making sure all my edges stay nice and aligned. All right, so Jessica does not have you using a zipper foot for this. So if that thing intimidates you, if they see that foot and you're like, oh my gosh, what is that? Don't worry, we're just using our quarter inch stitch and our quarter inch stitch setting, and we're gonna stitch all the way along the top back stitching again at the front and at the end of that seam so that way everything stays really nice and secure and this bag is gonna last for a long time. All right, so I'm starting right where those fabrics begin. So the back stitching is on the fabrics and just make sure you remove your pins as you come to them. Sewing the quarter inch away from everything. So I've come to the end here. I've got to make sure I backstitch again, get everything nice and secure, trim those threads. Now here's a really good tip. What you want to do here 
is open this up and everything should be going correctly at this point. So if you have it where the outside is there, the top of the zipper is here, and if we flip it over, we see our inside, so that's great. And in this case, you've got plenty of space in between here and the edge, but you can always, if you're concerned about your zipper being able to open, just open it up, because if you've sewn over any of those zipper teeth, then your zipper will not function. All right, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of a press here before I move on to sign the other side. It really, because this canvas and the home decor bond is so thick, it really just kind of wants to fold over like that. But I'm gonna hit it with the iron as well. And you can iron over your zipper, so don't worry about that. You're not gonna melt it or anything. Don't like stay on it forever and ever, but you can do that. Get the other side too. That nice and stitched. All right, so it's time to repeat with the other side. So first what we're going to do is we've got our bag right side up again. We're gonna flip it over. And this time I wanna make sure that my edges are even with the edges of the piece below it. So I can see underneath here that I've got that in line and then my edges are even with the top. So now I'm gonna take a little pin and get that secured here. And I'm gonna work all the way down. And again, I'm gonna line those edges up here on the sides. And then also make sure the top is even with the top of my zipper tape. So now for this point, because we've already worked all the way down what we did the first side. So at this point I can kind of divide and conquer. So I can get to the middle and pin that in place and then I go halfway in between the middle and that side and just really securing all those layers together and making sure that my edges are nice and even. If you're ever concerned that things are working out right, you can always open it up and you should always have your outside pieces together with the top of the zipper and then your lining pieces are gonna be facing out this way. So now if we flip it over like this, our lining pieces, should our lining piece from the first half is sewn up. So I'm gonna flip this so that my lining pieces are now right sides together. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I'm lining up with the edge from here. I've got all my corners together and I'm just gonna repin that, keeping the edges of my lining, my outside and my zipper all at the same piece place. And then repeat on this side Then I'm gonna repin as I work my way down. Starting with the center. And then working my way out. Just to repeat one more time, cause this is sad if you screwed up. If you, at this point, when you open it up, you should see your two outside pieces and the top of your zipper. And then if you look at it from this way, your two lining pieces should be right sides together and you should be seeing the bottom of your zipper. So we can see the bottom of the zipper pull there. So as long as you're seeing that, then you're gonna be okay and you are good to sew. And again, we're gonna sew right down this side and we're gonna backstitch at the top and at the bottom. All right, so I'm starting at the very edge here. I'm gonna backstitch so that way that is nice and secure. And then sewing a quarter inch seam, I'm just working my way down, making sure all my edges continue to stay nice and even. And my seam is nice and accurate. And there is a ton, you know, coming up over here. It's kind of weird to manage when you're used to a nice flat quilt, but it's totally doable. reach the end I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch again put those threads all right so just like on the other side we want to press these so that they're going out and that way we can press the edges down here so I kind of finger press this first just like I did on the other side then I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna go down the center of that and just kind of give it some heat to help it stay there 
repeat on the back. All right, I'm gonna do a little top stitching along here. You wanna do an eighth of an inch stitch. I'm gonna put that quarter inch foot that has the guide back on, so that way the guide can just sit right along in here and I'll have a very perfect professional looking top stitch. So you don't need to reinforce your stitches here because this is mostly decorative. But what I've got going on here is I've got this guide right in line with the edge of the seam allowance and I'm just stitching along. And I'm not really even looking at my needle. I am looking at that guide to make sure that that guide is right in the channel where we press that fold over. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Very nice, very professional, very straight. It's looking good. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so at this point, we're gonna start sewing our edges together. And before we do that, we've gotta pull our zipper in so that way we don't cut off the zipper pull when we get to the edge. I'm also gonna cut this off at this point as well. So I'm just gonna cut my zipper teeth off here and here. I like to use my paper scissors for that so I don't dull um, anything else too fast. All right, so at this point, we're gonna put our right sides together for our outside and our inside. So our bag is gonna look a little bit like this at this point. What I wanna do is take these darts and arrange them so that one end is going to the left and the other half is going to the right. That makes it really easy to nest those seams just like if we were quilting. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in here to keep that nice and secure. I always like to pin on the left side of the seam allowance because I feel like I'm gonna get to that second. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing that and going around. There's only four little bits to pin, so not bad. It is a little tricky to manage just because you have so much um, stiffness with the interfacing and the canvas, but um, it's really gonna make for a really great finish in the end. All right, so continue getting those nested in and going in opposite directions. All right, so there's one last thing we have to do and then we're ready to sew this up. And that is we've got to get these zipper teeth going so that they're going to the lining side of everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up my zipper teeth. So you can see they are lined up there. And then also the top is lined up as well. And then I'm just gonna put a little pin in right there to keep everything nice and stable where it should be. I'm also gonna put one right above where these guys go together. Just a little double pin, have it come a little bit better. And then do the same thing on the other side. What this does is it will ensure that the zippers kind of go to the inside of your bag. All right, so when we sew this, we need to leave the bottom open for turning. So you can either mark that, or I like to just put a little pin. You wanna put it past where the darts are because you don't wanna have to sew those by hand. But what you do wanna do here is just put a little pin so you've got your start and your stop. So that way you've got enough to reach in and turn everything. You basically want a hole that's large enough to where you can reach your hand in so you can grab everything and turn it right sides out. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna back stitch, go all the way around, and then stop and back stitch here as well. And then we're gonna turn it right sides out. And I'm just using a quarter inch stitch for this. If you wanted to do additional pinning, you absolutely could. This is really stiff material. It's not going anywhere at this point by the time we've got all that interfacing in there. So I'm pretty confident it's not gonna shift on me, but if you like to pin more, by all means do it. I went ahead and put my regular press of foot back on again. And again, that's because I don't like that guide for when we need to have sharp pins and sharp points and we definitely need to get as close to those darts as possible and I feel like that guide makes that difficult when you have pins in there. All right, so I'm gonna flatten this out as much as I can. It may be difficult to see from our side camera here. Um, but what I'm doing here is I am just starting where that pin was. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce those stitches. Let's see if I can flatten this out so you can see from the side here. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch, stitch, stitch. And just like if we were doing quilting, I sewed until I got into the left side of that dart. So like the left side of that seam allowance. And then I'm gonna pull my pin because that needle is kind of acting like a pin and making sure those darts stay really nicely together. All right, so I'm gonna go nicely around this curve. It's on a race. Okay, so I always like to slow down when I get to my zipper. Flatten this out so you can see a little better. Because you can sew right over a zipper, it's not gonna break your needle or anything like that. But you kinda wanna take it easy. You don't wanna go full force over it. Um, otherwise, it's just kinda hard on your sewing machine. So I'm gonna go a little slower as I go through this bulky area. And then I can kinda speed up as I go along here until I get to the next start. So I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get all the way around. All right, I made it all the way around, so I'm gonna reinforce those stitches so that I don't rip anything out by accident when I'm turning it right side out. And now the fun part, the big reveal. All right, so you wanna do this gently so that you don't rip those stitches out. But I'm going to reach in here and I kinda of have to scooch the zipper over a little bit more. And I'm just gonna gently pull this out. And again, you, you need to be as gentle as you can because you don't wanna rip out those stitches at the turning point because those darts are really close to it. So you don't wanna to have to re-sew those by hand. That would not be fun. So I'm just kinda of going slow and steady. Oh, and I ripped him, of course. All right, so before I get this all nice and pretty, what I'm going to do is sew this inside while it's still sticking out. So what I like to do for that is just kinda of fold it in. And if you kinda of put your fingers at the edges like this, that will kind of start to turn in for you. So in this case, this guy's turning down real nicely. I'm just gonna put a pin in just that one half. You can kind of eyeball what the quarter inch is because it's the bottom of the bag. No one's gonna inspect it unless they're like really digging for their keys. And then I'm just gonna fold this side down about the same. And then I'm gonna get these together and lined up as best I can here. All right, so we've got that pinned together. I'm gonna pin it again about a quarter of the way between that and where I left that opening for turning. All right, this is the side where it, uh, the stitching did rip back almost to the dart. So I'm going to kind of pull that together as best I can. And give that a pin too. Now you have two options at this point. You can just do a top stitch really close to the edge here, and that's fine. That would make it go really fast. I really like to sew this part by hand, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get as close to match as I can to my lining and my thimble, and I'm just gonna real quick whip stitch this together and show you how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna start in this corner because this is kind of the problem corner where it kind of got pulled a little bit. I'm going to put my needle in from the side here and come out at the top. That way I can kind of hide my knot inside, just like I would if I were doing binding. So kind of pop that through. All right. So my knot has now popped on the inside of there. All right, so you can see where my stitches have pulled there. So I'm gonna do a little bit smaller stitches here, just so that it is really, really secure in there. And I'm just trying to make sure that I hit both sides. And this is more challenging to do right in that edge because there's so much fabric with those darts. It is definitely easier to stitch through once you get a little bit further in. But what I'm doing is I'm just picking up a little bit of thread from one side, a little bit along the side from the other. It's really close together. And just pushing that needle through. And when these pins start to get in the way, just remove them because you wanna be able to pinch your fabrics together and because of all the interfacing, it's not like it's gonna flop around a ton. 
All right, so I'm about a stitch or two beyond where I stopped. You can see where that gray thread is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to tie off, and by doing that, I just wrap my thread three times around the needle, like so. And you're gonna pinch the wraps and pull forward like that. It creates a little knot. So now I can just sort of bury this thread in Pull my needle out a little ways down. And then I can bury the knot just like we would if we were doing quilt binding. All right, now that that's done, we can finish stuffing our lining to the inside. And we wanna also pull out our bag as we're doing this as well to get those gussets out as much as we can. And now we have a cute little kitty wristlet. <laughs> And all that's left to do is add our little strap. All right, so I already top stitched everything earlier. Now I just have one more step to do and well, two more steps to do. And then this is all done. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold my strap in half so that my short ends are together. And I'm not going to pin this because it's so little. Um, it's really easy to just kind of keep it together underneath the sewing machine. So I'm just kind of keeping those guys together and I'm just going to slide that underneath and then using a quarter inch stitch and a whole heck of a lot of reinforcement, I'm just gonna sew over this. All right, so I reinforced a ton at the beginning and I'm also gonna reinforce a ton now that I'm at the end. And you're gonna wanna clip any stray threads. You can see there's quite a few here. Now I'm gonna take a swivel hook. This one is a in gunmetal because I really like the finish of that with the nice black everything else that's going on. So I'm just gonna slide that in just like that. And you're gonna fold it over back just a little ways, not too far. Um, I've got maybe an inch or so, yeah, about an inch. And so now I'm gonna stitch again over this a ton in order to keep that uh, nice and secure. I'm actually scooting this up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna stitch right over my stitching line from before and get that nice and set in there. Again, I'm not pinning, I'm just sliding this underneath and I'm gonna sew the heck out of this baby. So do some reinforcing. Sew a little more. I'm gonna reinforce some more. All right, now to the end, I'm gonna reinforce some more here. Back it up even a little bit more and reinforce. You cannot reinforce enough on this thing, let me tell you. All right, we've got the cute little wrist strap all done. So now we can just clip this baby to the zipper and you are ready to go. Love this, it turned out so cute. It took me just over an hour to do. And we have so much canvas, and you can also do this with any quilting cotton, but I really love the canvas. So check it out. It doesn't take a ton of material, so it's a good first bag to do because you're not gonna be spending a ton of money on something that you're not sure if it's going to check out. Again, everything you need for this project, we have all the descriptions or all the products linked in the video description down below. If you like something, you wanna give it a go. If you get the supplies from us, it helps support us and helps us be able to bring you new videos every week. And this one, we will also support Jessica Vandenberg because we are ordering all the patterns and the hardware directly from her over at So Many Creations. So lots of really cute stuff and you can have lots of really beautifully finished handbags for yourself. So again, this is a real simple, pretty fast one for you to do, to give it a try. And we're gonna be coming out with more of them in the coming months. So stay tuned for more. We're gonna be making some bags. And until next week, happy quilting.